And Graham Hunter joins us on the line to talk to us. We're going to talk uh, Spurs a little bit later on, Graham. But the other big story from last night was Real Madrid, Madrid just squeaking it out at home, coming from 2 0 down against uh, Club Brugge. Brugge. What happens? Fantastic game, Jer. Such entertainment. Um, I spoke to Philippe Clement, the Bruges manager, afterwards, and I said to him, what, what was your tactics in order to try and isolate Ramos and Varane against Brighton on loan South African Percy Tau and Manu Bonaventure? And he was like, yeah, I, I asked my team to go out and be brave, to play football, and he did the rest of the team to work really hard in order to get the counter-attacks good. But he said, I don't want them hoofing the ball to our forwards and chasing it. I want good possession. I want them to, and they did something that I, I yearn to see. So many visiting sides play when I go to Bernabeu to watch Romero or when I go to Camp Nou to see uh, Barcelona. They came with no inferiority complex. Man for man, they were you know, lacking in transfer market value. Probably in some instances, man for man, they were lacking in quality. But they went out there, Bruce, with a really clear counter-attack game plan and the instant they beat a challenge anywhere in the pitch, they were looking to put it into the feet of Diata and Bonaventura and Tau. I don't know if those who are watching off the ball saw Bonaventura's finishes, but the first one was absolutely brilliant. It was a little billiard stun shot where he was controlling it with one foot and accidentally tapped it in with the other foot. And, and that left Courtois completely floored. It was just an absolute... Um, misadventure and I asked them afterwards I spoke to Bonham and Jure in the mix zone I said listen was that a little trick you worked on just giving an opportunity he said no 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 I was desperate to score and my feet got too enthusiastic which is a brilliant way to explain it the second goal he nearly falls over when he uh, robs Modric and run right, runs right through but instead of falling over he writes himself in time and just dinks Phil Mickelson's the ball over poor old Courtois who then went in at half time and threw up and went home literally Right, I didn't know that. Yeah, he yeah. Said, okay. okay. Uh, not not a good sign. I mean, had he been sick in advance, or was that just? Uh... I'll, I'll leave you to speculate as to whether it was a disappointment of the way he'd been humiliated. His dad had to allegedly, and I'm told, his dad had to come and drive him home at half time because he was so poorly, dizzy, throwing up. Ariola, the Frenchman, the same for Paris Saint Germain, uh, came on, made an outstanding, big-bodied. Schmeichel-esque, one-on-one -on -one save with Bonaventura for his hat-trick, the Nigerian. And immediately, uh, Madrid went up the pitch, ball into Ramos, who, who, look, it was almost a Pippo and Zaghi with Alex Ferguson. He looked born offside in that one. It, it, I, I just can't understand how VAR eventually gave it. VAR showed it being onside, but the naked eye said, no, I suppose that's why computers rule the world. Um, but it, it, Ramos's header came directly in that flow of play which led from Ariola saving one on one from Bonaventura for Madrid to go three 0 down instead two one eventually to two Mignolet two fabulous saves. Look, Jar, if you're a Real Madrid fan, then uh, well, at the, at the Bernabeu, although there were whistles at halftime, huge whistles and and Courtois whistled because they've lost faith in him. The fact is that the the atmosphere was volcanic. It was an early kickoff. You expected there to be fewer fans there because Madrid fans don't like starting a game at that hour of the night, um, 7 p.m. And, you know, the reaction in the second half was wonderful compared to a woeful first 45 minutes. So the, the, the cynics, the doubters, will be feeling more hawkish today. But for anybody who just went along to watch a great game of football, this was Champions League at its absolute finest. Okay, I mean, it, there's no evidence that this is a hinge point for their season. There's going to be a turning point that they somehow look at the the rescue act that happened last night. But we've seen this happen for Real Madrid. We've seen it happen for Zidane in the past. Is there any sense that this might be a turning point? Well, if you amalgamate it with the way they're playing domestically, you, you know, they left their dignity in Paris, didn't they? Literally, they'd have to phone up to Lost Property at the Park de France and say, uh, hi, have you found our self-respect? Um, from that point onwards, they then go and win 1-0 at Sevilla in one of their best performances for eight, nine, ten months. They beat Osasuna. They then draw at the Metropolitano against the team that were the better side, probably should have won. And second half against Brugge, they show maybe... That they didn't play Rolls-Royce football, but it was all guts and garters. They might have snuck a win. 
And therefore, I, I think if you put your uh, point. Ah. <clears throat> lost him. We've lost him. It was a great game, that Madrid Bridge game. Actually, the, the early kickoffs, the, <clears throat> the Inter Milan Slavia Prague game a couple of weeks ago, and the Madrid game this time, you have the away team from the, the smaller league. But they've actually sort of gone and, and really impressed. And then, and then, both of them struggled to, to close it out from promising positions. But uh, I really enjoyed that game yesterday as well. I, I sort of got to see most of that match. And uh, it was just great to see Bruges, some team come with a real plan. Yeah. And not just going kind to of come and, and be beaten before they, they walked onto the pitch. Yeah. You know? And I it, mean, it really, really like, you know, under the group stages gets a sort of a bad time, but uh, there's been some good stuff in it so far. Yeah, it's not, it's not the heavyweight clashes that are going to define the business end of the competition, but you've got like decent teams from around Europe and proper football in places that are competing head to head with the greats you know or, or I mean you can debate the status of, well, of the greats Madrid, you know but yeah. Real Madrid or, or Inter Milan it was a couple of weeks ago I mean diminished status but um, you know they're just really good to watch you know yeah. really, really sort of good for, for the competition um, and yeah there's still a few stories to come in these group stages yet I think um, Graham's point earlier about uh, a team coming somewhere like the Bernabeu and uh, trying to actually get it Graham's got one last minute for us. Yeah, we were just talking there about how good the group stages have been. Um, before, we move, let's move on from Real Madrid because we'll get to, to talk about them for the rest of the season and if anything is imminent or otherwise. Um, but something might be imminent at Spurs. I don't know. What did you make of it? I mean, I know you didn't get a chance to see it because you were uh, obviously at the... No, I, did. I watched it afterwards because we had the early kickoff here. So I was able to tune in and, um, you know, look, it's a long subject for a short answer. They're... they're Prior to the result, people around the club had been talking to me about some of the players, um, how can I phrase this, uh, choices uh, that they're making in their lives away from the training ground and that um, one player in particular was um, going down a path that, that wasn't, that was bore no relationship to... Um, the way in which this disciplined, organised, intelligent group of players has played potch football for you know several seasons now. The the phrase to hear Pochettino afterwards talking about his players having given up um, is desperate. Um, I've long been an advocate that the brilliance of managing a football project that was succeeding at a time that they were laying out serious money for what is an outstanding training ground, and then pulling together even a delayed stadium project while not spending money on footballers, while having a very tight and well-controlled salary structure. It's been a, mir a mini miracle. And the fact that Pochettino um, was speaking out over the summer, in, in my, you know, in this bunch of stuff I do that's associated with my podcast, I, I, I made strong predictions in the summer that when you hear Pochettino speaking about lack of investment, when you understand that people who have um, put out in order to get to a golden future, and then they find that the golden future isn't an influx of um, necessary talent and youth, then you know that, 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 that it's just in life, not, not, not much. People get burned out. And I think we're seeing a group of people, perhaps including the manager, who've been thinking, if we get to that stage when the training ground is long done and the, the, the ground is open and, and we've done well domestically, then things will relax a little bit and, and there will be, the press strings, I mean, will relax a little bit and there will be an influx of talent and youth and, and that hasn't happened. And I think the burnout is there. I think they've given so much over so long. Um, many, many people stretched. But having said that, you have to follow the evidence of your eyes irrespective of Spurs um, by their own manager's um, victim having hauled up a white flag, it's rare you'll see finishing like we saw by Bayern Munich. And you have to put that into the equation. You can't make 7-2 at home into a one-sided story. Um, Bayern surprised me. That, you know, they've had the domestic travails. I think they only won 3-2. I think, I'm sure it's Paderborn. But they only won 3-2 away in the Bundesliga. To, tend, to turn that performance into a 7-2 win in London... Is, is enormous and, and the lion's share of the story needs to be for Spurs but you know having watched that game and the way in which they, they finished their chance I mean some more just half chances 
I've rarely seen finishing like that, and that has to be part yeah. of the analysis. Yeah, a fair point. Graham, good stuff. Thanks for joining us. Cheers, fellas. So, Graham Hunter in Madrid on his way back to uh, Barcelona this morning.